On the eve of World War II, Poland had over three million Jews. It was one of the largest and most vibrant Jewish communities in the world. By the time the war ended, only 380,000 had survived the Nazi, Nazi genocide. Well, today, Jews and Christians are remembering that history with the goal of, of remaining forever vigilant so it will never happen again. CBN's Julie Stahl reports from Poland. It's called the Narrow Bridge Tour. That's a phrase from a famous Hasidic folk song in which goes, all the world is a narrow bridge. The main thing is not to be afraid. And what has characterized life for Jews and Christians in this part of the world has been, especially in the last hundred years, is the life is uh, quite risky and frightening and dangerous and uh, actually it's a matter of life and death and at the same time we should not be afraid. David Pelegi leads the Anglican Christ Church in Jerusalem. Each year he brings Christians from around the world here to explore the thousand year history of the country's Jewish people and the influence they still have today on Jewish communities around the world and Israel. We come to this country to study Jewish life, Jewish Christian relations, the Holocaust, and in particular, we really want to ask the question, why did so many ordinary people do such horrible things? And at the same time, why did so many ordinary people do uh, such courageous things? CBN News joined Pelagi and about 20 Christians from various backgrounds on his most recent tour. This is not your usual tourist trip of coming to Europe and seeing castles and gardens and pretty things. Uh, it's a little different. It's very different. Touching the wall of the Warsaw Ghetto, standing on the dock where Jews would soon enter the Sobibor extermination camp, walking through woods along train tracks to Treblinka, or visiting the deadly concentration camp at Majdanek. This is about what happened to the Jewish community in Poland that for a thousand years got along quite well with non-Jews and then when World War II came was completely extinguished from this nation. It includes stories of Jewish communities told in the cities and towns where they lived in eastern Poland, like the story of Tykochin. We're in this town as a group to discover why were Jews here in such large numbers. I mean, we're in a very rural part of the world. Invited here by the Polish nobility more than 800 years ago to help develop the country, these Jewish people thrived, and by the eve of World War II had grown to three and a half million, the world's largest Jewish community. Many Polish aristocrats, they had estates in rural areas, and Jews managed those estates, collected taxes for them, did any number of things and uh, ultimately helped the Polish aristocracy grow food and take that food up the Polish river system and to export it to different places around the world. And Poland grew economically and politically uh, really thanks to the help of the Jewish people. In August 1941, however, the Nazis rounded up the Jews of Tykochin and told them they were going to the ghetto in Bialystok. Instead, the Nazis marched or drove them out of town to a nearby forest. Overnight here in this beautiful forest, Nazis murdered more than 2,400 Jews and buried them where they dropped. Part of the community that had helped build Poland's economy wiped out in a day. It's very hard to look at the Holocaust and to think about the suffering people. I think one of the great things about this particular trip is that we're also studying the Jewish heritage site. Thousands of these mass graves can be seen throughout Central and Eastern Europe. Even before the death camps or gas chambers, the shooting deaths of millions of Jews and others became known as the Holocaust by bullets. At some of these sites, participants recited the Kaddish, the Jewish mourner's prayer that proclaims the greatness of God. Attorney Raymond Daig says the lesson he sees is how it could happen again. It's a frightening prospect. We all say to ourselves, oh, I would never do that. I could never be there. But human nature is such that we have to be forever vigilant because these kinds of things can happen and did and did with a vengeance. There are also heroic stories, like the famous Oskar Schindler, who saved Jews by insisting he needed them in his factory that today houses a museum. 
in Krakow, Tadojch Pankiewicz owned a pharmacy in an area designated as the Jewish ghetto. As a non-Jew, he and his staff were supposed to leave, but he fought to stay. They observed the Nazis rounding up the Jews, humiliating them and shooting them. Under penalty of death, they secretly tried to help sick and starving Jews and even hid some Jews in the pharmacy. Bible translator Professor Brad Young says it's important to be in the place where things happened to fully understand the history. We must learn the history of the Jewish people and understand the connection that we have as Christians with the suffering of the Jewish people in history. Bishop Julian Dobbs, a longtime student of Jewish history, says he came to Poland because so much of it happened here. I believe that we understand our Christian faith more fully when we do so through a Hebraic lens. Therefore, understanding the place of the Jewish people, both in our faith through the scriptures, but also in the history of the Jewish people, deepens our understanding of our own faith journey. Pelegi says for years he taught people about the Jewishness of Jesus and Jewish roots of Christianity, but it seemed artificial that interest in the Jewish people stopped when the New Testament was written. And of course God still has his purposes for the Jewish people. He still remains in covenant with them. I think it's quite important that we have a basic understanding uh, of their history. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Warsaw, Tykochin, and Krakow, Poland. We also need to understand this, the history of our own salvation and the words of Jesus to a Samaritan woman at a well. Salvation is of the Jews. Without the Jewish people, there is no Messiah. There is no covenant. There is no, no old covenant, no new covenant. None of that happens without the Jewish people. We need to honor them outside of biblical history and just in terms of modern international law, we need to recognize the Jewish people have a right of self-determination. That's been established in international law since the League of Nations. And that was the reason for the British mandate over Palestine. That's the reason the modern state of Israel came into being, to allow the Jews to have self-determination. Let's never turn away from that. That is a noble aspiration for all people across the planet. Can they have the ability to defend themselves, establish their own nation, establish their own future? Let's all stand with